Hello everyone and welcome to the parasympathetic nervous system. I want to talk about this because I have found a lot of value in yoga, meditation, breath work, qigong, tai chi, whatever you want to call it. And what I think is lacking is a description of what happens with these so-called internal arts from a Western perspective. It's very irritating for a logical person to go into a yoga class and hear a bunch of stuff about the chakras and the bandhas without having any introduction into what that means. And it's a bit complicated and it's a bit esoteric when talked about from the Eastern perspective. It's also really complicated talking about it from the Western perspective, but I just want to give you some idea. It's not a bunch of woo-woo mystical stuff necessarily. Maybe it is, but here's how we describe what's going on in these internal arts classes in Western perspective, from a Western perspective. So the parasympathetic nervous system is your non-voluntary systems. Uh, it li they, they, the parasympathetic system controls glands, involuntary movements, the smooth muscles and, of your body, like the, and the cardiac muscles of your body. So. We see here the parasympathetic system uh, comes out of the cranium, the medulla oblongata, and the sacrum. And we see the organs that it controls in the glands, such as the eye, uh, all these glands up in your face, mouth, and nose, your heart, your, your respiratory tract, your digestive tract, and your uh, waist your waist and your genital organs. So here's a few terms. The somatic nervous system is your voluntary nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is your involuntary and the uh, parasympathetics included in this. Now, like I just showed you on this map, the key components are in the cranium and the sacrum. You may have heard the term craniosacral therapy. If you haven't, you have now. Um, the PSNS inhibits the somatic nervous system. So the somatic nervous system in includes your fight or flight. It's not just voluntary muscles, but it includes your fight or flight. And when you're all jacked up all the time and your personal regimen is lacking in internal work, like breath work and meditation, the fight or flight system isn't really turning off and you may just feel anxiety, depression. Um, a lot of the common things that we're seeing um, in the modern times. I think obviously the best way to fight anxiety, depression is to turn off the television, stop drinking alcohol and stop eating refined sugar. That's for another video. The parasympathetic system, again, controls the smooth muscles. So these are involuntary muscles, your cardiac muscles, and the glands. Now, the glands, we don't really think when you're thinking about working out, you're thinking about your biceps and your abs and your glutes. Um, but the glands are what regulate your mood and your mental state. So it really doesn't matter if you have a ripped bod or you can flex into some crazy yoga pose. If you're not in a good mood, if you're not feeling optimistic and strong in your mind, you have nothing. So stimulating and relaxing these glands in the proper way is, is of the utmost importance. The parasympathetic nervous system connects the uh, Craniosacral, that's CS, craniosacral components to peripheral tissues. Peripheral means kind of at the edges via two neurons, uh, the presynaptic and the postsynaptic. And we can also say pre or post ganglion, a ganglion being a gr group of neuron cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. And that's all nerves that lie outside 
the central nervous system. And what, what happens in the ganglion is a synapse. Let's move to the next slide. Uh, a synapse is a structure that permits a neuron to pass an electrical or chemical signal to another neuron or, the, to, or to the target effector cell. So the parasympathetic ganglions have three roots, the sensory root, the motor root, and the sympathetic root. The sensory root is the proximal, that means the near end of the dorsal afferent nerve. And here's a picture of the dorsal afferent nerve. That's the nerve that sends input from your skin or um, peripheral nervous system to the spinal cord. Um, so that's the sensory root. The motor root carries presynaptic parasympathetic nerve fibers. They terminate in the ganglion and they create a synapse. Again, that's, uh, it permits the neuron to pass for the postsynaptic fibers to travel to other target organs. And then the sympathetic carries the postsynaptic sympathetic fibers that transverse ganglion without crossing the synapse. So, so these are actually a little bit to the outside. Um, okay. Okay, presynaptic neurons are in the medulla oblongata and sacral spinal cord. They give off long axons that leave the central nervous system and travel towards the postsynaptic neurons. Presynaptic neurons synapse with postsynaptic neurons using acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter, so it's a chemical reaction. These pathways are called cholinergenic pathways. And then these lie near target organs. They don't necessarily lie in the target organs. Uh, that was supposed to be a picture of L-cytylcholine. I guess it didn't uh, upload. The cranial outflow are your uh, cranial nerves. These, these, uh, the ciliary, the patero, pterygo palatine, the submandibular, and the otic. And that's cranial nerve three, seven, and nine. And we see that here in this picture, three, seven, nine, and then there's 10. We'll get to that because this is uh, kind of categorized differently. Uh, so cranial nerve three carries presynaptic fibers from the aoculomotor nucleus, and they innervate the ciliary muscle and the sphincter pupillae. That's your eye. Okay. And you got to think again. Look here, parasympathetic. Your your pupil size decreases when you're relaxed, right? Because it's like you don't need to see in the dark. And then in the sympathetic system, when you're turned on, it the, your pupil uh, dilates and gets bigger. And here is kind of there's the ciliary muscle and the ciliary body is this little blob here, and the ciliary muscle is the little uh, red thing, and we can see how that works with the lens of the eye. Cranial nerve 4 carries presynaptic fibers from your superior salivatory nucleus, and they synapse with postsynaptic neurons in the pterygopalatine and submandibular ganglia. Uh, and so there's two nerves formed here, the greater petrosal nerve to the lacrimal gland and the nasal mucosa, so that's your tear duct and your uh, sinuses, and the corda tympani to the submandibular gland. Now let's see if we can get a picture here. There's your lacrimal gland sort of at the outside of the eye. So it's interesting that the, the gland is out here, but your tear duct is here. Um, see, uh, cranial nerve nine, carries presynaptic fibers from inferior salivatory nucleus, which synapse with postsynaptic neurons in the otic ganglion, which then projects postsynaptic fibers via the auriculotemporal nerve to innervate the parotid or salivary gland. So again, digestion, salivation, that's, that's something we associate with relaxation, right? You don't necessarily feel hungry when your fight or flight has kicked in. And look at all these glands in your face. A lot of times we carry so much tension in the face. Um, and this gives you an idea of where these glands are. And so when you're doing your mind-body work, your, your relaxation, your meditation, your breath work, your yoga, whatever, you can sort of imagine, okay, 
look look at this right here the parotid gland if your jaw is tight and the jaw muscles are the strongest muscles by weight we have in our body um so if your jaw is tense that parotid gland's all messed up your sublingual gland here at the bottom of your mouth if your tongue's all over the place and not relaxed these glands are going to be affected by that so so relaxation of these soft tissues through your face extremely important during this internal work and here we go again we can see the masseter muscle that's your jaw muscle how that parotid gland almost just like overlaps it it's like a venn diagram here this is your lymph system that drains from the submandibular gland and when I'm meditating and when I'm cueing meditation or yoga or, or deep breath work, in, in yoga, breath work is called pranayama. Uh, we see here how the submandibular gland, all this lymph drains out of your, um, out of your face here into your chest. So the point of this is that all of our bodies, all of these systems are so connected. Again, sometimes you go to a yoga class or a workout class, they're talking about your hamstrings or your glutes or whatever. And in reality, it's a lot more complicated than that. Vagus outflow here is like the big kingpin of the parasympathetic system. It supplies 75% of your parasympathetic outflow. Here's the vagus nerve. Look, it comes up here into the ear, kind of where your glasses go. It attaches to the facial nerves. The facial nerves are, are since those are sympathetic and, and controllable um, by us consciously, uh, those come out of a different cranial nerve. We'll talk about that in another video, but look for the vagus nerve. It comes down the side of the neck, the jawline. Here it is. That's your um, larynx and pharynx. That's your epiglottis and your voice box. And then down all the way through your lungs just trickling down here and we see the vagus nerve here and and it just controls so much of your so many of your organs um we can see that here cranial nerve x boom all these glands heart larynx esophagus stomach pancreas liver adrenals you know that's important and, and the large intestine, and it's really interesting here how the large intestine is connected kind of on different sides, one to cranial nerve 10 and one to the sacrum. Um, mm -mm -mm. We're lagging here. Technology is not my strong suit, folks, neither is editing, so this is just going to be a raw video. Uh, here is more of the vagus coming down. We see it's here in the heart. We see it attaches to the multifidus and the back of the rib cage right here where your diaphragm connects back there behind you can't see it that's where your psoas is that's the hip flexor muscle that everybody talks about so seeing uh cranial nerve 10 the vagus nerve it innervates the thoracic abdominal viscera so these are the little nerves or uh, little muscles in the thor in your chest and your stomach um, they originate from the dorsal nucleus of the vagus nerve and the nucleus ambiguous in the brainstem, and they synapse with organs in the thorax and the abdomen. Fibers from the dorsal nucleus of vagus primarily innervate the lungs and the GI tract up to the splenic fixture of the large intestine. And that's where we see here, uh, eh, eh, boy, this program isn't great. Uh, right here, boom, right there. That's kind of where, and then everything below that is, is, is handled by the sacrum. Uh, and the fibers from the nucleus ambiguous supply smooth muscles of the heart, pharynx, larynx, and soft palate. So this is kind of more the, the upper torso. The thorax, and here's just some definitions. Sacral outflow. The sacrum is a very important bone. It's called the sacrum, the sacred bone. There is a lot going on with the sacrum. And if you know you have a good yoga teacher, if they're talking about the sacrum a lot. Now the sacrum does have a joint. It's called the SI or sacro, sac, sacroiliac joint. Uh, and there is a little bit of movement. That's not necessarily the topic of this video. 
Uh, we'll get to it in another video. So the presynaptic fibers leave the spinal cord through the anterior roots of the sacral spinal nerves, S2 through S4, and the pelvic splanchic nerves that arise from their anterior branches. And they synapse with the post uh, parasympathetic ganglia around the descending parts of the colon, rectum, viscera, the pelvic cavity, penis, clitoris, and bladder. Um, so again, we're here we're talking digestion and sexual arousal. You're probably not sexually aroused if you're in like a fight or flight. You got to be pretty, hopefully, pretty relaxed, um, and, and to like take a dump or to take a piss. Generally, that involves relaxation. And here we go. Here's um, a map of the lower body. Here's the pelvic splanches, splanchic nerves tucked right there under the uh, right here. So sort of just down in the cavity of your uh right in front of the sacrum and that's you know over this is kind of what we call the dantian in um qi or traditional chinese medicine and that's the sacral chakra in yoga uh the vagus nerve forms two plexi that's intersecting nerves that's the inner Sula mucosal nervous plexus of Meisner, and this innervates the gut mucosa, so that again, more digestion, and the outer or intergenic nervous plexus of our back, and that inputs um, the sympathetic fibers from the thoracic splanchic nerve. So, what's really interesting here is that the vagus nerve it forms two plexi one that we can control, and one that we don't. So that is why deep breathing exercise, when you're really consciously breathing deeply, um, that is a, a great way because we remember the vagus nerve gives us 75% of our parasympathetic uh, output. So when we're breathing deeply using these sympathetic fibers of our controllable muscles, we are really enervating the vagus nerve and really allowing the parasympathetic system to kind of take over and inhibit our fight or flight response. Um, yep, yeah, and here's just some more definitions. Here's so here's what uh, the parasympathetic does for our heart. Heart rate uh, contract. Basically, it makes your heart beat and it makes you pee, poop, and uh, get a boner. I don't know if that's the medical term. And for your eyes, it, close up vision, tears digestion, salivation, defecation, right? So basically the point here with our parasympathetic nervous system is it is tied into our controlled nervous system. So we can access it in some ways consciously. And that is the key to relaxing all of these organs, all of these glands and getting yourself over time in a generally more relaxed and focused state. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.